Hello mate and welcome back to another exciting video. This one may be um, one that uh, has been requested recently, but it is it has been a long time. So let's do this. As you can see, I've got a scene loaded on the screen and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the ways that I set this up for rendering. There's going to be render settings obviously discussed in this, but also some other things to make sure that this is um, a good, quick and clean render. So firstly the elephant in the room uh, yes your gpu is probably the most important thing when it comes to getting a good fast clean render essentially what you need is a gpu with a lot of vram and a lot of cuda cores because ira uses cuda cores to do its computations um at this point at this stage in the game most of you are probably going to be using RTX graphics cards. If you're not, that sucks for you, to be honest. <laughs> um, the RTX graphic card, graphics cards are very, very fast when it comes to rendering. And if you do have a god-tier graphics card, i.e. a 1490, then your graphics card is going to be insanely fast at doing rendering. You're going to be seeing a reduction from what used to take hours down to mere minutes. Uh, especially with the 24 gigabytes of VRAM. It means that you can have much more complicated scenes without worrying about it reverting back to CPU rendering. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So first thing we need to do is we need to talk about how we can optimize our scene to make sure that we are not unnecessarily loading our graphics card, our GPU. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, if you've got a God-level GPU, that's got 24 gigabytes of VRAM, who cares about scene optimization as long as it's not reverting to CPU rendering. And to a certain extent, I agree with you, but there is always a good reason for doing things more efficiently. Just because you have a motorbike that can go up to 12,000 RPM or more, doesn't mean you want to ride it around like that all the time because you will do damage. And it's the same kind of logic is applied to GPUs. It's just because your GPU can do something doesn't mean you need to constantly be tasking it with doing that thing. And probably the most important thing is the actual mess resolution on your characters. As you can see, I've got two characters. One's in the background and one's in the foreground. Now, the one in the background, if I switch to NVIDIA iRay preview mode and just give it a few seconds... What you can see is that the character in the background is barely visible because of the bokeh that's been used um, primarily to isolate the character that's close to the screen. So if we select that character in the background and we have a look at the mess resolution, at the moment it's got a subdivision level of 3. Do we actually need a subdivision level on this guy at all? I mean he's not even on the screen so let's just bring him down to subdivision level 0 because he's not actually, you know, we don't care about the detail of him. He's just there in the background. Um, the same with our character that's in the foreground. He's not so close to the camera that we need to go absolutely mental with subdivisions. So we can leave him at subdivision level um, 2 and the render subdivision level 3. We don't need to go any higher than that because all that would be doing is overloading our GPU with information that it doesn't really need. If the character was right up close to the camera we had a real close-up of its face, then absolutely going up to subdivision level 4 or five would be great but at this distance from the camera we don't need all of that uh, detail because he's you know it's a three-quarters shot <clears throat> so that's quite important when we look at our render settings and obviously the other most important thing is probably the second most important thing arguably the most important thing is the lighting iRay uses light rays to calculate what's going to be displayed on the screen just like any other game and just like how your eyeballs work your eyeballs receive light that's been bounced off of surfaces and it interprets that light into the image that your brain your big fat brain then sees so we need to make sure we've actually got some light in the scene so if i just jump back out of uh, to nvidia iray mode we'll go to texture shaded mode and i quickly jump to perspective view and we look at the ceiling and i'm just going to zoom right out what you can see is i've got a whole buttload of lighting panels on the ceiling that I'm using to illuminate the scene because this is a shop this environment it's a shop vignette so um, what I've done is I've added a lot of light to it to give it that kind of bathed in in light look so that there's plenty of light and then the renders will be nice and quick as well so that when I actually render this for real 
It's going to take a matter of minutes once it's done the initial processing. So let's have a look at our render settings tab now. So I'll bring my render settings onto the screen. I appreciate this is in 4K, so the text is quite small for you if you're um, if you're looking at it in a on a 1080p monitor. So you're just going to have to listen carefully to what I say. First thing we go into is our general tab, and you can see that we've got our custom settings here realistically the only thing i'm interested in here is the output resolution now i'm rendering these images on a 4k monitor but i'm rendering them for a game that is 1080p so what i've done is i've done manual oversampling i.e my renders are bigger than 1080p so that when i reduce them the image is nice and sharp it also means that i can get away with stopping my renders a little bit early if i'm in a rush and the noise will be mostly absorbed by the oversampling. So as you can see here, I've got 2560 and 1440 as being my resolution, which is 2K if I'm not much mistaken. Um, and then what I will do is I will use a piece of software like Cesium to actually reduce the resolution down to 1920 by 1080. And that is what we call manual oversampling, i.e. the image resolution is higher so when we shrink it down, it appears to be sharper. Basically, in the general tab, that is all we are interested in. What you can do is in the advanced section, you can deselect CPU. It does require you to restart your uh, get your engine, i.e. restart Dash Studio once you've done it. But it just means that Dash Studio will absolutely not revert back to CPU rendering if you do, by some miracle, manage to go over your VRAM. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go through these settings quickly because actually a lot of the vanilla settings are pretty good. So for example, render mode, we're just going to make sure we're set to photo real. Progressive rendering. Now you can turn render quality enable off. I personally don't bother because I'm not so interested in that. What I'm really interested in is the maximum samples and the maximum time. If you've got a really complicated scene, what you're probably going to want to do is crank up the maximum samples and the maximum time and let Dash Studio decide when it's reached 95% convergence. So you can see maximum samples and maximum time. At my, uh, and, and this particular scene for me are set to uh, automatic or the, the default settings. But if I wanted to, I could crank them up so that it's all the way up at 15,000 samples and I can give it all the time in the world to 259200 seconds. It's never going to use all of that time because it's going to hit 95% conversions much quicker than that. And if you really wanted to crank up the quality, you could set the quality to 4, or not 40, that would be crazy, and then set your convergence ratio to like 99% and then you're going to get a longer render but your quality will be slightly higher. Although, if you're doing manual oversampling, you're probably not going to notice that much difference because once you shrink down the image from a 95%, it's going to look pretty much 100% anyway. So it's up to you if you want to do this, but it's kind of neither here nor there, to be quite honest. Alpha, just don't touch. Optimization, the only time you're really going to want to come into this section is if you've got a lot of glass in your scene that you want to do that rainbow reflection thing, in which case you want to turn on caustic sampling. And if you are dealing with the black eye bug, then you can obviously change your instancing optimization to speed to allow you to dis or get rid of the black ring in the eyeballs. But um, so that's a kind of a case by case basis thing. Filtering, no, don't even touch. Do not touch the bloom filter. Do not touch the denoiser. You don't need them. If you've got a god tiered GPU, they're just going to make your images look like crap, to be honest. Leave your renders to do what they need to do. If you're in a rush, don't use Dash Studio. It's quite simple. If you're that short of time that you can't afford to wait for 20 minutes to get for your renders to complete, don't use Dash Studio. Go somewhere else. Spectral rendering, don't even touch. White mode, don't even touch. Section objects, don't even touch. Tone mapping. Okay. Tone mapping only really becomes relevant when you're dealing with low light or high light situations, i.e. if you've downloaded a HDRI from the internet and it's not very bright, you know, the person who's made it has set the power settings of that too low, and you're struggling to get your exposures right, then you can play with these settings 
as if you were a photographer so you can adjust your film ISO you can adjust your aperture your f-stop you can adjust your shutter speed and you can adjust your exposure value but you're probably going to have to start balancing the lights in your scene anyway because the ghost lights and things like that that you add to the scene are going to be conflicting with the HDRI so there's going to have to be a lot of light balancing done um, so tone mapping will help you a little bit with regards to that but really when you get an HDRI that's too light the, the environment section of the render settings is really where you're going to have to do the fixing so let's jump into the environment section as you can see I've already got an HDRI loaded it's set to dome and scene it's sent to infinite sphere so dome and scene basically means that it's going to use the HDRI for lighting as well as any lights like ghost lights or any other emissives that I have in the scene as well. You can change that to dome only or scene only if you want to only use one or two of the others. But it's, it, you know, you've got to, again, case by case basis. If it's an outdoor scene, you're pretty much guaranteed to need to use dome at least. Um, generally speaking, dome and scene is what you're going to be using unless you're absolutely using an indoor scene with no windows, then there's no point having the dome on. All that's going to do is slow things down. Infinite Sphere, if you're using a uh, HDRI, you want it to set to Infinite Sphere. You don't want it set to Finite Sphere because you know, that just kind of complicates things. Okay, Draw Dome. If you're not using the dome in the scene, i.e. if it's an outdoor render and your characters are outside funnily enough and you want the sky and the clouds and the backgrounds to be visible turn on draw dome if it's an indoor scene like I've got in this scene with no windows there's no point having draw dome on I want some of the light to bleed in from the front of the vignette which is why I've still got the dome turned on but the majority of the lighting is coming from the actual panels that I've put on the ceiling so it's not a huge issue Environment intensity and environment map. Environment map is where you load in your HDRI. As you can see, I've got the Dash Studio default HDRI there at the moment, and I've got the intensity and the environment map set to the default values. Basically, these two numbers are multiplied together to determine the intensity of the light from any given pixel in our HDRI. There is more to it than that, but I don't really think it's necessary to go into a huge amount of detail about it, to be quite honest. If you adjust these values up and down, you will increase or decrease the brightness of your HDRI. That's all you really need to know at this point. Environment tint is quite useful. If you are rendering a scene uh, that has got a window that you can see out of, then changing your HDRI depending on the time of day is not going to be very realistic because if one of your renders shows a nice lush forest out of the window and then at night time you see a desert that's going to be quite jarring you know unless you're rendering a scene in the TARDIS. So environment tint will allow you to use the same HDRI for morning noon and night and all you have to do is adjust the environment tint. If I click on my environment tint you can see I've got three color presets one is blue, one is yellow, and one is slightly peach colored, and then obviously white. So during the day, I leave it as white because that's the full HDRI. At nighttime, I use the blue color. In the morning, I use the slightly yellowy color, and in the evenings, I use the slightly peachy color. And all it does is means that I can use the same HDRI, and it's just gonna change the color of the light so that it looks like it's that time of day. Environment resolution, just leave alone. Pretty much all of this stuff you're going to leave alone unless you want to rotate your dome and move it around. If you do feel like you want to rotate your dome because it's quicker than moving everything else in your scene to suit, just use dome rotation here and it'll allow you to rotate the skybox or your HDRI so that you can get the scene out of a window that you actually want. It's just quite useful. Sometimes it's possible to just change a render. If you're rendering a series of images all located outdoors, you can use dome rotation to give the perception that the characters are moving when they actually aren't. It's quite useful. Um, ground texture scale. Again, don't really bother with any of this. Draw ground, I actually should have turned off, to be honest. Um, all that draw ground does is it adds shadows at zero, zero, um, zero in the y direction in your render even if you haven't got an actual floor plane there so it's useful if you're using an HDRI again 
for outdoor renders but most of the time if you're rendering indoors and you've actually got a floor you're not going to need to use that the matte fog and the ground fog are used for really big scenes if you've got an awful lot going on um, for a long distance you can use these fog options to give you that a uh, bit more speed in your render and to give the perception of depth by making things that are further away appear like they're in some kind of mist or fog again don't stress too much about these it's really not all of that important in an indoor scene uh, and unless you're rendering something with like mountains in the background and they are actually mountains in the background rather than just an hdri these become relevant but most of the stuff in the render settings tab is fine in the default once you get up to the 30 series or the 40 series of rtx cards you're going to find that you're playing with render settings an awful lot less and you're going to be actually optimizing your scenes a little bit more focusing on it because you have the performance there we always want to shave a little bit off so knowing how to optimize in the render settings is great but the majority of the tricks that you're going to use are just going to be adjusting things like the mesh resolutions adjusting the things that you can and can't see in the scene in this case this shop um is not meant to be stacked to the gills if i come back out to perspective view and i reset my camera view uh, here you can see that there are boxes on the shelves closer to the character but the, the boxes behind the till the counter over there don't actually have anything on it so it's um you know that's a more of an artistic choice than anything else but i, I could just copy the boxes that i've already got on the shelves and put some over there if i wanted to but i'm not particularly bothered because they're not the major feature of what's going on in this scene it's just that they're kind of there in the background so yeah rendering settings play with them by all means but you're not going to be adjusting too much in there because the default settings are doing a pretty good job um the the majority of the time you're just going to play with things in the scene to make sure that you're getting the maximum out of it and if you have got a 4090 you know you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want and you're going to get a decent render within i would say the longest render i've ever had on the 4090 has been about 15 minutes and that was a complicated scene with like four people in it so you know it's pretty good for rendering anyway guys hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below and so on i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye